All right, MEHAP students, um, I wanted to quickly make this video. Um, the DBQ that you wrote about the opinions and motivations for imperialism, uh, what was it, attitudes toward and motivations behind European acquisition of African colonies, that was actually the DBQ from 2009. Um, what I did was I just simply took the question from 2009, reissued it to you, and then I took from the documents, I cut out certain documents. Again, the DBQ back in 2009 was a different animal. The rubric was a nine-point rubric. There were what were called six core points. You had to earn all six core points before you could possibly earn any of these additional points, and you could earn them additional ways. Um, there were, I believe, 12 documents back then. Um, yeah, and so I just chose five of the 12 to give to you. All right. Uh, and, and so I'm going to I'm going to email this to you guys, this document, this PDF. It's not really as helpful as some of the other documents that I've sent you when it comes to breaking down score. Um, and then it goes on to show you the other essay questions that were available, et cetera. Um, but something I do want to I do want to touch upon or I find helpful when looking at this. Um, I believe I've gotten way off track. Oh, yeah, there's all these other questions. It goes through all the questions. Um, but here, what I want to show you, and I think that this is helpful, um, it gives you, uh, there are the documents, right? Here, here's something that I, I, I think is helpful, though, all right? And it, it's, it's literally buried in here. It's only page four, and I'm going, to, I'm going to emphasize in my email to you guys, um, this was a point of emphasis that, again, everyone seemed to struggle with back then and, and to this day. That whole point of view, purpose, reason, historical context. Here you go, okay? Acceptable point of view analysis. Um, this is a document we didn't use. But here you go. Here's one we did use, Joseph Chamberlain, because Joseph Chamberlain was actually Doc 2 for you guys. It was Doc 4 on this DBQ. It was Doc 2 for you. It's the one where Joseph Chamberlain talks about the economy and trade and how without Without imperial trade, the the country would would fall apart. Since Joseph Chamberlain was an industrialist, he supported industry. He supported imperialism. He stood to gain economically. So here you go. Right. This is an example of point of view. I'm not saying that some of you didn't mention Joseph Chamberlain. The industrialist said. The problem is you can't just say the industrialist said. You have to explain why the man being an industrialist is a helpful aspect or an aspect we need to consider. You need to mention why the man being an industrialist might taint or color his opinion, right? He has a, an exterior or ulterior motivation in what he says, right? Um, and so, you, you know, he st because he's an industrialist, he stands to gain from the growth of the British Empire, right? Um, <clears throat> Here you go. One that I mentioned on a few of you, a few of you. Document four for you guys was the governor of French Equatorial Africa, um, which is one of the poorest countries on earth today, by the way, uh, the country that now exists. It's not called French Equatorial Africa, but it is incredibly poor. Um, here you go. So on your all's DBQ, it was Doc four. On the original DBQ, it was Doc 11, right? Henri Merlin. Governor General of French Equatorial Africa, right? So again, on yours, it was Doc 4. On theirs, it was Doc 11. But here you go. Merlin is a Governor General of a colony, so his pro-imperialist point of view is not surprising since his job is dependent upon the success of French. That's what several of you I said. Hey, why don't you mention the fact that this guy's entire job title is dependent upon imperialism? It's not a shock that the guy points out, like, oh, we should do imperialism. We have a right to be imperialist. We have a duty to be imperialist. This guy's entire life is dependent upon imperialism. Mention it. It's said in the source. Marshal Henri Merlin, Governor General of French Equatorial Africa. Speech, 1910. I mean, this thing. You can't just go, as the governor Henri Merlin said. You can't just drop the, oh, he's a governor. Why? What does it matter? you got to show these people that you understand the nuance. The reason why this is an important facet, detail. Something we should take in consideration, okay? You know, analyzing tone. 
many of you are going to be very unhappy with me when you look at the grade I gave you because you're going to go, man, you said I whiffed on the Bismarck one. You did whiff on the Bismarck one. Because Bismarck was most concerned with power politics in Europe, his comments regarding imperialistics seem somewhat satirical. Yeah, many of you acted like Bismarck was trying to compare the struggle in Africa with the struggle in Europe, and he saw Africa as the great battle. You guys totally misunderstood Bismarck. Bismarck was mocking that man. When that man was showing him a map of Africa, Bismarck was making fun of him, saying, this is my map. Here's us, here's France, here's Russia, you know, because he understood. Africa was not going to settle his strategic problem of being surrounded by an, an opposing alliance, right? Or, or two great powers, okay? So you could mention how, you know, you have to... Basically, if somebody is being sarcastic in a document, you have to call them out for being sarcastic, but you have to explain. How do you know they're being sarcastic? Why do you know it's sarcasm, right? And this would be a way to do it. Now, here's what I think is very helpful, okay? I wanted to show this, and that's why I'm going to the extent of actually making a video to highlight some of these, okay? If this is not enough either, though. This doesn't work. If you were just to say... Um, and by the way, this is one that you all had. It was Doc 12 in the original one, but it, it's the uh, it was Doc 5. Doc 5 in your all's one was uh, Louis Bernard, uh, colonial official memoir in 1936. Okay, if you wrote, you know, if, if you want to make the argument of, well, I said it's his memoir, right? That he was an official. It's all you did was state exactly what they said. You took the actual thing that they provided for you in the document. You just rewrote this. You didn't do anything. You just rewrote that, okay? That doesn't show any skill, all right? It's merely attribution. No further analysis. It doesn't explain why he held the view. It doesn't, exp it doesn't show anything, right? You've got to analyze. You're not analyzing. You're just reproducing. Um, it's also not enough to simply say, it's his memoir, so it's obviously objective. Um, this again is just attribution. You aren't explaining why the mem why the fact it's a memoir is important. Okay, you can't just say this person is clearly biased. They are a politician. Why are they biased? Okay. Um, now here, here's an example that would work. If you were to state something, you know, Louis Bernard. Um, in his memoirs, you know, decades after the fact, you know, talking about this, etc. And then you were to somehow tie in, you know, one can see the powerful element or, or reasoning behind this, that a man were to remember it all those decades later, right? Something like that. You know, a man looking back on his career, trying to justify it. You know, memoirs, there's something about memoirs. Everybody likes to act like memoirs are the truth, right? Memoirs are known for being some of the most biased and colored things ever because what are they? They're a person's last defense. People write a memoir because they're hoping that that's what history will remember. They are trying to write the history, right? They're getting their version of historical events and they're hoping that they win. That's what a memoir is. Memoirs are never honest. People attempt to be honest, but they never are because. Who wants to sit down and as they recount their career, admit all their mistakes, all their flaws, all their failings, and, and let history basically judge them that way? No one wants that, right? As much as we like to think we could be honest, you could put that. You know, we have to take this with a grain of salt or, we, you know, we have to remember this is a man who might be trying to justify his career or justify why they did what they did. Um, you know, he's writing it 30 years after the fact or 20 years after the fact, right? Who's to say he, re he reliably remembers events, right? Um, so I'm just trying to point out, bias is not just, I said he was a politician. That's not enough. Why is that bias? How does that create bias, right? You know, you can't just say, oh, this is from a poster, therefore, no. Well, okay, excuse me. You can't just say, well, this is from a poster, so we can believe it. No, what, why? Why would I believe a poster? What makes a poster believable? What makes a memoir believable? What makes a memoir biased? You know, what makes a politician biased? So 
I think if this is helpful for some of you who are still struggling on this aspect, this point, right? Look at this. I, again, will emphasize this. Like I said, looking at this is not near as helpful as some of the previous ones. I will also attach student examples. But again, because the rubric was so different back then, I don't know how helpful it'll be. Um, but I will provide you with, with student examples, and you can at least write, see what some of those people wrote and maybe get a better feel or flavor. Um, but I, I want to talk about this bias a little more. 